I, I was talking about um, probably about um, higher levels of education um, in terms of of uh, the skills that we want to teach in education, the intellectual skills being verbal. Um, but obviously, children, very young children who start kindergarten or first grade, um, they enter already with, a, with a, an established set of verbal skills. And this is, I think, where um, the culture places a great emphasis on the education that a child gets at home before they enter school. Um, there is really good research which shows that how much talking that goes on in the home um, is strongly correlated with a child's verbal skills and their verbal IQ. So if parents do a lot of talking and reading to their children, and it's not just talking, although that's a part of it, it's the total amount of talking that goes on in the home from the time they're born, by the way, we're not talking about when they're three, we're talking about from the time they're born. Um, even though your child can't understand you and has no idea what you're saying, um, the research shows that it's, highly, it's very important to talk to your children a lot. Um, and then during the time, from the time they're born until they're two or three or four years old, it's not just the amount of talking, it's the quality of talking. So for example, parents who, who use a lot of admonishments and threats and, and punishment um, end up with children who don't talk as much and whose verbal IQ uh, scores are, are much lower. So if you talk to them a lot and read to them a lot and ask them questions and make sure that you praise them a lot and, and interact with them verbally, then when they get to school, they're already going to be in, in a much better position to benefit from the kinds of verbal skills that occur in school. But once they get to school, let's say in first grade, uh, it's important for teachers to understand that the shaping process of the verbal skills is not finished yet. Um, so much of what we learn, um, the rudimentary um, um, aspects of reading and math and science and history, um, those all require shaping verbal behavior. Um, if you ask a child who was the 16th president or you know, what was the war of 1812, or you know, the child doesn't know the answer to that. So you have to model that answer verbally and then you have to make sure the child says it and is reinforced for saying it. And this is really kind of a microcosm of how, uh, of how a teacher should interact with a child at all levels. Um, but as I said, in the traditional classroom where a teacher does most of the talking and the children sit and listen, uh, that's, that's, it's not possible for that to happen. And, uh, and that also happens in reading. If you want to teach a child to read, you have to hear the child read. Um, so how does one teacher and 40, and 40 kids, how is one teacher able to hear every single child read um, and so what happens is a lot, of a lot of children fall through the cracks and don't learn to read or they end up with reading problems that are called things like dyslexia. So, so the shaping of a verbal repertoire is critically important for parents initially um, to provide the models and the feedback and then for teachers following that.